Give me another example. The media talking about Trump's rally on Saturday. Now, there were 9,000 people in the hangar up there at Melbourne. There were thousands of people that couldn't get in. There was a line a mile long starting at dawn on Saturday up in Melbourne. People wanted to get in. And I had spies up there. And my spies counted 500 to 700 protesters, even though they all knew Trump was going to be there. The difference is that the protesters knew there were going to be minimum 10,000 Trump people there. So the usual mob didn't show up. And one of the themes running through the drive-by media is that the Trump administration is so off-kilter. The Trump administration is such chaos that Donald Trump had to go out to an airplane hangar and do a campaign-style rally as a form of reset. Sorry, I have a totally different take on it. And I share this with you. I've talked to nobody at Team Trump. I've talked to nobody about this. I'm just using my common sense and intelligence guided by experience. There's two things here. First thing is, all Donald Trump has are his voters. That's it. He doesn't have any other support base out there like Obama had the entire media and all these massive, huge donors and special interests. Trump doesn't have any of that. Trump's voters have seen a month of media that has had as its purpose to destroy the notion of a successful Trump presidency. Trump has to go over the heads of the media. Why did the press conference, 77-minute press conference, hailed as effective by me, and then he goes out and does the rally. And there's two things for the rally. One thing is to just go out, tell his people everything's cool, we're moving forward on things that you voted for, we're running smoothly here at the White House. Another thing that nobody's mentioned, he wanted to create, well, I don't know that they wanted, but I'm just telling you, they created pictures that counter all of the video of these supposed mobs of protesters that hate Trump. I mean, let's face it, the first month of Trump's presidency, every day all we've seen is thousands of people supposedly organizing organically in towns and cities all across America, outraged, ticked off, mad that Trump is president because the Russians hacked the election and Trump's not legitimate. Trump shouldn't be there. Thousands, thousands, thousands. You've seen the pictures. Well, Trump's rally creates competing pictures which demonstrate that he still has the massive support, love, and popularity he had during the campaign. Another thing about the media, I said, you know, they're, they're so obtuse in a sense. They've been trying to dislodge Trump, to destroy Trump, get him off kilter ever since he got into the race. At, at what point are they going to decide that this may not work? The Access Hollywood video didn't work. All of the October surprise type things didn't work. Standard, ordinary, everyday politician destruction 101 stuff didn't work. It didn't work to the point that he got elected president over somebody who was considered to be a landslide shoe-in. So if what they were doing prior to the election didn't work, what makes them think it's going to work now? But I'm going to tell you something, folks. This is a new era, and you're looking at the way it's going to be every day for four years. Don't care. This is going to be the way Donald Trump is covered. Now, Trump's like every other human being, wants to be loved, wants to be liked, wants to be supported, and he really does want to unify the country. And this coverage is designed to make it look like that's not happening, won't happen. And even if it does happen, it's designed to make it look like it hasn't happened. And that's why I suggested that, you know, make tracks, get this domestic agenda going and get, you know, it's going to have some confrontations up on Capitol Hill. We have to be honest that Capitol Hill is filled with Republicans and Democrats, but more importantly, they are establishment types. The so-called best and brightest, they don't want Trump to have any kind of success or any more than he's had. Trump's success has already turned their world upside down. You know, all during the eight years of Obama and even years prior to that, if, if you go to Washington and New York and the and New York, LA, San Francisco, the coastal elites, they were doing fine. 
Their incomes are constantly up. Their 401ks are doing well. They never worry about losing their jobs. The rest of the country, they didn't care what the circumstances were in the rest of the country. They were doing fine. Trump has come along and thrown that upside down. Glenn Reynolds has a really good piece on this in USA Today that I just scanned a couple paragraphs of, and I think this is what he's talking about. I'll look at it in greater detail further uh, as the program unfolds. But it's a, it, it, it results in the fact that the instability that we're going to see here and that we are seeing is establishment versus outsider. And it was never going to be pretty because the establishment was never going to just stand aside and let you and me and any of the others, including Trump, people support him, just come in and take over uh, all of these institutions. And that's why you're seeing the pushback from nameless sources in the deep state, in the bureaucracy, Obama and Clinton career appointees, and maybe even some Republican career appointees held doing everything they can to hold on to what they control. And no matter that Trump won the election, doesn't matter as far as they're concerned, he's not the president. And he, what he says isn't going to go. And if we have to sabotage him because we got friends in the media that will help us. And this is what we're up against. And it's going to look like this. Now, I said for the next four years, I, I think you can quiet it down. I, I think if they push through this repeal of Obamacare, I think that'd be so huge. And I think if they really do something serious on immigration and tightening the borders, you know, that's another thing. You know what immigration has come to be defined as? There's nothing I've figured out. When you talk about immigration today, when the left talks about immigration, what they really mean is open borders and anybody who wants to come in gets in. And if you oppose that, that's where you're a bigot, that's where you're sexist, that's where you're racist and a, a phobe of some kind. And part and parcel of this is making people like you and me look like we are opposed to immigration totally. That makes us supremacists. That makes us bigots. They want to say we're opposed to all immigration. We're not. Nobody's opposed to immigration. Nobody denies the role immigration has played in the building of America. We're talking about legal immigration. We're being overrun. We're being overrun by people who are non-citizens. And we're having that called immigration. And then if you oppose that, you're a bigot, you're a sex, all these other horrible things. And nobody's talking about it. So these are, these are the little mind games and word games and tricks that are being played. And it's all designed to weaken your support for Trump by making it just too hard. It's just it's too hard and not worth it because it looks like they're never going to go away. But you get Obamacare repealed and replaced and you get rid of the mandate and you get rid of some of the taxes. And then you come along with tax reform and shoring up the border. And success is the sweetest revenge. And succeeding in this agenda that Trump laid out and talked about every day, multiple times a day, is the best thing he can do to calm down. In fact, folks, it's already, already starting to happen in various pockets. If you look carefully at the news, for example, there's a story here today that I have coming up in the stack where Washington Democrats want their insane base to stop talking about impeachment. They want their insane base to calm down. You're also seeing stories uh, about more and more Democrats realizing that Trump won and he's going to be president for at least four years and it's going to require getting rid of some of this childish emotion and getting with it. It's not massive, but there are, there are beginning to be some cracks in the resistance. And it's primarily due to the fact that maintaining that emotional pitch of anger is simply not possible. It's not humanly possible. You need to be, you'd have to keep recruiting new people, paying new people to act mad and ticked off. Because after a while, you know, it just, it, it, it burns itself out uh, from person to person. So they have to keep replenishing the supply of bought and paid for protesters to carry the, uh, and, and if it doesn't work, if it doesn't force Trump to change, if it doesn't force Trump out of office, if it doesn't make Trump apologize, if it doesn't change Trump at all, and it didn't change Reagan, if it doesn't change Trump, it loses some of its zeal as well.